In this video, I'm going to be building a naive Bayes classifier from scratch in Python. So no scikit-learn, just a pure mathematical implementation built from the ground up. Hey everyone, I'm Harry, and this is episode four of the Machine Learning from Scratch series, where I'm sharing my process as I work through implementing classic machine learning models from zero. Let's get straight to it. The Naive Bayes classifier is a probabilistic classifier. Its goal is to calculate the probability that the target variable y equals a particular class label lowercase y given a set of features x. For example, in the breast cancer diagnosis dataset that we'll be using later, the target y can either be b benign or m malignant. So for each set of features x, we compute two probabilities, the probability that y is benign given x and the probability that y is malignant given x. Once we have these probabilities, making a prediction of the true class label y is as simple as choosing the class with the higher probability. In other words, the predicted class y hat is the class that maximizes the probability that y equals y given x. This is because the probabilities tell us how likely each class is given the features. So if the probability of malignant is higher than benign, we predict malignant, since that's the outcome the model believes is more likely given the evidence. However, it's difficult to calculate the probability of y given x directly, this is where the Bayes theorem comes in. It tells us that the probability of y given x, which is what we want to find, is equal to the probability of x given y multiplied by the probability of y divided by the probability of x. A few key terms to note here, the probability of y given x is called the posterior, since it's the probability of the class y after observing the features x. The probability of y is the prior probability as it's how likely class Y is before seeing any feature evidence. The probability of X given Y is the likelihood and the probability of X is the evidence. Importantly, the evidence stays the same regardless of the class Y. This means that when Naive Bayes compares probabilities across classes, the probability of X doesn't affect which class has the highest probability, so we can safely ignore it. Now computing the likelihood P of X given Y can still be tricky, because X usually contains many features. For example, suppose we have just three features describing a tumour, size, texture and shape irregularity. To calculate the probability of x given y equals malignant exactly, we would need the probability of this specific combination of feature values occurring together given that the tumour is malignant. Even with only three features and three possible values each, there are 27 unique combinations. As the number of features grows, the number of combinations combinations increases exponentially. Many of these combinations may never even appear in the training data, leaving us with no reliable way to estimate their probabilities. To get around this problem, Naive Bayes makes a simplifying assumption that all features are independent given the class label. In other words, given that we know whether a tumour is malignant or benign, the probability of its size, texture and shape irregularity, for example, can be treated as independent of each other. Mathematically, this means means we can write the likelihood p of x given y as the product of the individual probabilities of each feature given the class. This assumption is rarely true in the real world as features often interact, hence the name naive, but it makes the math easier and surprisingly works quite well in practice. Lastly, in the example I gave earlier, we were dealing with categorical variables like size being small, medium or large. In that case, we could estimate probabilities just by counting how often each category occurs in the training data, but in many real-world datasets, including the breast cancer diagnosis dataset, the features are continuous. For example, measurements like the radius of a tumour aren't just small, medium, large, they can take on a wide range of real values. In these cases, we can't just count frequencies the same way. Instead, we can adapt naive Bayes by assuming that each continuous feature follows a normal Gaussian distribution. That is, for a given class Y, the feature Xi is normally distributed with a mean mu and standard deviation sigma. The probability of observing a particular feature value xi given the class is then given by the Gaussian probability density function. This gives us a simple way to assign probabilities to continuous values. Putting it all together, to calculate the posterior probability for y given x, Naive Bayes multiplies the prior probability with the likelihood, which under the independence assumption is the product of the individual feature probability and if the features are continuous, we calculate the probability of each feature values using the Gaussian distribution. <laughs> 
All right, now let's get to coding it up. So the first thing that I'm going to do is import the libraries we need. NumPy for any numerical calculations we might use, Pandas just to load the data set, and scikit-learn just to split the data into a training set and a testing set. Everything else, the actual naive Bayes algorithm will be built entirely from scratch. Next, I'll load in the data we'll be using. The data set we're using for this is the breast cancer diagnostic data set available from Kaggle. It's a binary classification data set where each example is a tumor described by a number of features like radius mean, texture mean, and so on. The target variable is the diagnosis labeled as either benign, B, or malignant, M. I'll go ahead and pull out these input features and labels now. Here, X will contain the input feature values for each tumor. This doesn't include the ID and target diagnosis columns, so we drop these from this. And Y contains the actual true diagnosis class labels for each example, an array of elements that are either B or M. Once we have these, I'll go ahead and split this data up into a training set and a testing set using an 80-20 split. The training set is what the model uses to learn the class priors and the parameters like the mean and standard deviations for each feature per class in the Gaussian distribution. And the testing set lets us evaluate how well they generalize to new unseen examples. So let's get started. I'll define a class called Naive Bayes and inside we we'll first define a fit method. This is where we train the model. So it's going to take in our training input features X and output labels Y. I'll start by storing all the unique class labels in Ytrain. This is done by calling mp.unique on Ytrain, which returns a sorted array of the distinct class values, in our case just two elements, B and M. Then to first compute the priors, which is the probability that Y equals a given class label Y, I'll create a list comprehension that loops over each class in self.classes and calculates the proportion of training examples belonging to that class label by dividing the number of training examples equal to that class by the total number of training samples. To compute the means, I'll create a list comprehension again that loops over each class in self.classes. For each class, I'll filter X train to only the rows where Y train equals the current class and take the mean of those rows, giving the average value of each feature for that class. This gives me a list of panda series, one series per class, containing the mean of every feature for that class. I'll do the same for the standard deviations, but this time calling STD. So I end up with a list of series where each series contains the standard deviations of every feature for the training samples in each class. Next, I'll define a compute likelihood method to calculate how likely a given row of input features belongs to a particular class using the Gaussian distribution as our features are continuous. This is going to take a single row of data which represents one example we want to classify and the index of the class we're calculating the likelihood for. So we can access the means and standard deviations of each feature learned during training for that class. I'll first initialize likelihood equal to 1 and then loop over each feature in the row. For each feature I'll access the mean and standard deviation of that feature for its class. Using these I'll compute the Gaussian probability density for this feature using the math formula we saw earlier and multiply it into the total likelihood probability since in naive Bayes we assume each feature is independent. Once the loop finishes, likelihood holds the overall probability of the current row of input features belonging to that class, so I can return it here. Lastly, I'll define the predict method. This is going to take a set of input examples x and predict the class label y for each one. I'll start by initializing an empty list to store our predictions of the true labels y, and then I'll loop over each row in x, representing one example or tumor to classify at a time. For each row, I'll initialize an empty list to store the posterior probabilities that we get for each class given the current row of input features. I can then loop over the indices of each class and compute the likelihood of the current row belonging to that class by calling the compute likelihood method. Using this, I can append to the list of posteriors the likelihood multiplied by the prior probability of the current class, as this gives me the posterior probability for that class. After calculating the posteriors for all classes, benign and malignant, given the current row of input features, I'll pick the class with the highest probability using mp.argmax and append it to the list of predictions for all rows. Once we've made our predictions of the class labels for all rows in X, I'll return them as a NumPy array. Now that we're done, let's go ahead and run it. I'll create an instance of our naive Bayes model and call the fits method with our training data, which is going to calculate the priors and parameters the model needs to make predictions. I can then use this 
this trained model to generate predictions on new unseen examples by calling the predict method on the test set. Comparing these predictions to the actual labels in Y test and calculating the mean gives me the testing accuracy. And I'll print that out here. And there we go, we get an accuracy of 96.49%, meaning our model was able to correctly classify about 96 out of every 100 new tumors as either benign or malignant in this data set, which is pretty good considering the naive assumption it makes about feature independence. If you found this video helpful, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for watching.